Ladies and gentlemen, time for the candidates for the mayor's office. We're pleased to have with us tonight Mayor David Green and Martin Tufos. Hello, I'm Mark Cooks, candidate for Mayor of Duncanville. And I stand before you with two adult children whom I love, two successful adult children. I stand before you talking tonight with three siblings and all of them are three sisters who I've learned my listening skills from over the years. They've taught me to listen very well and I've completed that throughout my career. I've been in banking for the past three decades. And in many banking for the past three, three decades, it has taught me to build partnerships. As serving at the Council of Duncanville for the last, for two years, I came in with my, I came in with, with my feet hitting the ground running. Duncanville had, a, Duncanville had issues when I came in. I came in with the field house having issues. The partnership I started with, with our Duncanville is I partnered with Northwood University and brought them to the council to come up with a solution to start with our city. What a great partnership is the partnership with our educational foundation. I've served as your, as your council for District 4. The, set, the first year I was, I was selected as the board chair of the audit committee. The second year, I served as Mayor Pro Tem. Those opportunities have allowed, allowed me, with my background and my experience, to come before you today to run for mayor. I'm currently the Economic Development President and have served on Economic Development very well. I served there simply because of the business background that I have with small business. I would like Duncanville to become the small business capital of the Southwest. How we do that, ladies and gentlemen? We do that through partnerships. We do that through banking partnerships. We do that through outside partnerships to make that work in our city. There are three things that you will hear me say tonight. One is economic development through small business. I am the current candidate that can bring and to work with small businesses to in our city. The second thing you hear me talk about tonight would be the partnership through education. By partnering our, our high schools and colleges through our local communities to come forward. And then the third thing you hear me talk about was the quality of life of Duncanville. The quality of life consists of our police department. The quality of life consists of our parks. I initiated, initiated coming in for Duncanville where there was an issue where there were lawsuits after lawsuits. I was the person who selected those lawsuits. Not because it was a friendly thing to do, but it was, a, it was a role that was given to me to help move our city forward. Ladies and gentlemen, Mark Cooks of Duncanville to the candidate mayor.
quit. And we had uh, totally, uh, in our top leadership, an interim staff. We rebuilt our staff, and, and now we have some of the best. And the third thing was to, prefer, to uh, preserve and improve the quality of life for our community. We've done that. And fourth was to restore the morale of the city employees, who were a lot of them looking for jobs. When, uh, when, uh, when I came into office. I'm happy to report that all these priorities have been accomplished. We have uh, hired a city manager, an assistant city manager, a city secretary, an economic development director, a public works director, and a city planning director. We have added five new boards and commissions and attracted new first-time citizens to serve on these boards. Another top priority was to open to have open and transparent government. We have installed cameras in the city briefing room in order to televise our work sessions and briefing sessions. We are now holding town hall meetings out in the community. We've held four so far, We've got another one scheduled. We are currently mailing a quarterly newsletter to all of the citizens and we have developed a new, set, uh, new website which will go online on July 1. These are just a few of the changes that we have done in the past two years, and we've got many, many more to come. Thank you. Thank you. of small businesses that will allow us to know how to retain their business, how to grow their business, and how to have new businesses. You heard a lot talk about the Economic Development Committee. I was selected out of getting out the council as the president of the Economic Development Committee. With that, that tells you that the current leadership of our council has the confidence in me as a leader to bring economic development to our city. I can do that as mayor through partnerships throughout the city, throughout the state, and throughout the region. Economic development is close to my heart based upon the background, the experience that I have working in the banking industry for over 30 plus years. Ladies and gentlemen, economic development is what we need today. Bring what would you propose to the Dr. Bill community to encourage economic development? Well, we've already got it going. Number one is we brought in a highly qualified economic development director. One of the things that we've done is we've turned around and looked at the way we were doing business. We, first of all, put very qualified people on the economic development board. Uh, we, we slotted them. We've got a developer, we've got a various, we've got a banker, we, we slotted those slots so that we will have a, we've got a builder, a developer, and all of those type of people over there. Secondly, we rewrote the rules. We, we do now offer the same economic incentives to a small businesses as we do to large businesses. So we've, we've developed a new set of rules, and now we're beginning to really see the payoff and results in small businesses is a very big part of what we want to accomplish. Thank you. Very seconds, please. Thank you, Mayor, for giving me, giving me and the Economic Development Board the opportunity to serve and select me as, as your as the president. But I'll tell you today, ladies and gentlemen, we are not ready to be the small business capital of the Southwest. We're not ready simply because our foundation in which we have as economic development already has to start over in updating our ordinances, updating our policies, where we become small business friendly. You ask, don't trust me, ask our small business in our area and ask them if they're thinking our city is, is small business friendly. And we're not at this point. Thank you. Thank you. 
Would you like to draw a question, please? As the city grows and changes in diversity, what are your long-term plans for balancing the goals of Duncan? Our long-term plans for balancing the goals? Okay. My suspicion is perhaps in terms of diversity, what is it necessary to balance the city with that diversity? Okay, we've, we've already made giant steps in doing that. Number one is we've created five new committees that we saw were necessary to go ahead and carry the work plan out for the future. So in those five uh, different boards, we now have attracted about 95 people serving on various boards and commissions. We worked very hard to make sure that those boards were racially balanced. So that's the first step. Now, do we need more diversity on the council? Yes. Our largest uh, uh, group, uh, demographic group, is Hispanics. We don't have a Hispanic serving on the uh, on, on our city council. We need that deeply. But one of the ways you can do it is through your boards and commissions, let people get involved in government, and then they will decide whether they want to run for public office. And so that's 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 the way that we're trying to approach it. Um, the same way as the city grows and changes in diversity. What are your long-term plans for balancing the goals of that? You know, it's almost like uh, balancing a vault at the bank. The way we do that is to make sure that we have the appropriate people there responsible for taking care of the, the, the process of our city. Our city is a very unique city to me. Because we sit in an area where it's, 30, where it's a third across the board, pretty much, in diversity. Our leadership has to also change to reflect that diversity. Mm -hmm. Also, that leadership has to change to reflect the diversity. Yes, it has to start with the council. Yes, it has to start with the boards. But you can only serve on the board for so long. We need leadership around the table making policies. The policies that you can make from a diverse standpoint grows our city. Our demographics is a strong Hispanic base. It's a strong Afro-American base, a strong white base. How do you plan to improve the quality of life? 
The city council is charged with the health, the safety, and the welfare of the citizens. All three of us. It's very important that we pay close attention to all three of those. We have developed a park system that we're very proud of. We're putting a lot of money into it. There's walking trails, jogging trails. We have uh, uh, our exercise facilities, our indoor walking tracks. We are now trying to combine all of that with the field house. So we're making great strides in providing uh, ways that we can uh, provide physical exercise for all of our employees. But we've also got to be concerned about the other two items too, the safety and the welfare. We're making great strides there too. So I think that Duncanville is moving forward. Yes, uh, health is a very important thing. We just passed the smoking ordinance that, uh, that uh, we're going to eliminate smoking and pretty tough smoking ordinance. I haven't heard of it. Okay. Good. Would you like 30 seconds? Oh, yeah. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mayor, again, for acknowledging that I approached the city council months ago and asked the city council to look at the smoking ordinance in Duncanville. Because of working and talking to business owners, I felt that there was a need for us to change that ordinance. Thank you, Mayor and Council and staff for looking at that. And because of that, we now have that smoking ordinance. But had I not stood up and said to the Council, please look at the smoking ordinance, we would be the same as we are before. Very great. Please step to the podium for your closing statement. One and a half minutes. Thank you very much. During my opening remarks, I told you about the immediate priorities for Duncanville in 2014. I'm happy to report that we've accomplished all of those. In the fall of 2014, the council had held a retreat at which time we developed a new vision statement on the wall right outside this council chamber. We also developed 104 goals that we wanted to uh, see completed in the near future. As staff works on the programs that we need to, to bring forward for development this year, they, they're all tied back to those 104. Um, things that uh, I want to see from 2016 through 2018 are, if you'll pick up one of my little walk cards, they're listed on there. I'm not going to list them during this time because we're running out of time. And during the past two years, we've made great strides. Uh, in taking Duncanville from a declining situation to one that's looking very, very good at this time. Uh, I have been involved for years in, in everything from, ever, in, in fact, all of my, uh, my working life from uh, uh, church organizations, civic organizations. Uh, I am independent, responsive to you, and uh, so early voting begins on April the 25th through May the 3rd, election day, May the 7th, and I ask for you to vote. Thank you, Chamber. Thank you, Black's Club, for uh, putting this on tonight. At the end of the day, the city will speak through their voice, through their vote. My prayer is you will speak very loudly. Many people ask, Mark, why did you run? Why are you running for mayor at this time? Wait, don't run just yet. <coughs> the lot place fell on my heart to run for mayor. And I followed that direction. Mm. Ladies and gentlemen, I will tell you today. Remind me of my mother, who's a team player. She would drive to church, but she couldn't really see. So she had a partner on the side of the road that who couldn't drive but could see. That was a mixed signal because one was driving, one was giving direction. But when they got ready to venture out to a larger church and outside of the community, they needed a long distance driver. I was that long distance driver. All right. Duncanville today, I'm telling you today, it's okay with our community, but vote Mark Cooks for your long distance driver that will make our city and that will allow our city with your help to move forward. Mark your vote. Mark Cooks for mayor. 
for 2016. Chamber of Commerce if you are not, and also the Rotary Club of Duncanville um, if you would like um, to have some involvement in community service. Thank you. 